hello, I'm Smar McCarthy from the International Modern Media Institute. Uh, so this debate, as many others of its type, has devolved into the question of uh, personal freedoms versus national security. So I have a question for Stuart Baker. Um, so, um, <laughs> I'm going to prioritize as the next question anyone who has a question not for Stuart Baker. All right. Okay. So, uh, as somebody who, during this debate, has uh, used inter uh, U.S. internal law enforcement policy as a way of justifying the uh, activities of the Assad regime, and as somebody who has uh, uh, pr suggested that we totally reject all anonymity except for Afghan farmers, I would like to hear uh, whether you have any make any distinction between the security of the state as an institution and the security of the people living in the state and what that distinction is. And I'd also like to know if others in the panel have uh, a distinction on that. Thanks. Yeah, I, 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 will, I will start by saying you've obviously misrepresented my views, but I think everybody got that. You, you, you were enthusiastic about WikiLeaks as a human rights uh, issue. Some of the people who, whose information was disclosed had been promised by the United States government that they would be protected from their government when they came into dissent from what their government was doing or to provide in information about what their government uh, activities were, were, were. Some of them were farmers who were reporting on the Taliban's <laughs> activity in their village. Uh, um, so is it that their anonymity is not worth anything? What's the, what's the human rights well, side of this issue? Yeah, that's a very good question to ask the government of the United States. Okay, um, John, uh, suppose I uh, took to heart your, your suggestion that uh, reliability and responsibility shouldn't be the province of government. And I said, uh, but we surely have to have reliable statements, res responsible people, and action online. And I've got this brilliant idea for crowdsourcing it. Uh, that is to say, everybody will get a reputation for telling the truth or not telling the truth. They'll be held responsible for the things they say and do online. Only one thing we have to do, get rid of anonymity. Where do you come out? How, how, how are you going to maintain responsibility for behavior without holding people in the real world responsible for what they've done online? Um. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I, I think you've had a crowdsourced response. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you <clears throat> one example that I'm quite familiar with. Um, wiretaps. Uh, every s mobile switch sold around the world by every company comes with a wiretap feature built in so that the government can tap calls. Uh, it, it requires that they do it one at a time, uh, a, but every uh, switch of that kind can, can be wiretapped. Why? Not because Bashar al-Assad asked for it or uh, 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 the, uh, the Ayatollah asked for it, but because the FBI asked for it and German and uh, British interior ministries demanded that any uh, switches sold in their territory allow them to carry out wiretaps of criminals who otherwise were going to be very early adapters. Uh, and they, they did do that. Once they did it, it became available to everybody. Uh, the idea that you're going to then say to uh, uh, Assad, well, you can't have that, uh, it is implausible both because the technology has already been built and because Assad can say, as the FBI can say, we have crooks too. You may not like what we do with all of this, but you can't determine what we do with it by setting a technology policy. This is much more fine-grained and much more about governance than about the technology.